Hello, hello, hello. Hi, how's everyone doing? I trust you're doing well, you're happy, you're smiling. And welcome to Get Property Wise Wednesday Chats with Leroy. All right, Candice couldn't make it today, um, but that's okay. So I think let me wait for a few people to get on. Let's see who we have online. Today we're going to have an interesting topic, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about is municipal tariff charges sustainable or not? And I'd like to get your thoughts, whether you are live or whether you listen to the video after this. I would like to get your thoughts or of what you think about it. Um, do you think it's sustainable or not? Do you think it's fair or not? Why not? And what are the solutions? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So last week, um, before we finished our Wednesday chat, I read an email of the increases in Ekuruleni. So I got an email of, of what the tariff increases will be in Ekuruleni. So, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at the increases in Ekuruleni, Durban, Cape Town and Johannesburg. And then we're going to look at who's responsible for the charges. We're going to look at what the, the problems are and the issues are. And then we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to look at a few solutions. Okay? Happiness? So let's see. Um, okay, anybody on there? Good stuff. Good stuff. So I'm going to start. Right, but anyway, as I said, this is your Property Wise Wednesday chat where we talk about property investing. We talk about everything around property. Every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Um, on Property Pick. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to share this video, like it, comment, right? So, this is not just me talking. We want it to be interactive. Okay, good stuff. So, okay. Let me just make sure that I can see who's online. I'm, I'm on my phone. So, we normally use Zoom, but I'm, I'm using my phone today. Okay, but let's start. So, what I want to start with is, I'd like to read to you what the increases are in the different, in the different um, cities, right? Big cities. So, and I'm going to start with Ekuruleni. So, I'm going to start with Ekuruleni, right? So I see a few people are on you. So what we're going to look at, we're going to look at municipal charges and whether they are, they are sustainable or not. So let me know your comments. I see a few people are logging on now. So this is going to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because, because as an investor, these are huge charges and when we need to manage these costs, right? We need to see who's responsible for them. Okay? And we need to find solutions that will be beneficial to us as the landlords and to tenants. So does that make sense? Okay, so let me go through it because I think we've got quite a lot to cover here today. Okay. Um, so the increases in, in Ekuruleni, right? This is for, 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 for 2021. So, so, so they wanted to increase it in July, but then they didn't increase it up, probably because of lockdown. But this is the increases on the Ekuruleni, Cape Town, City of Joburg and Durban. So le electricity increases by 8%. Ekuruleni, right? Water will increase by 13%. It's huge, eh? Sewer will increase by 10% and refuse by 0%. This is in Ekuruleni. Okay? So let me say that again. Ekuruleni, electricity, 8% increase. Water, 13% increase. Sewer, sewage, a 10% increase and a 0% increase on a refuse. And then in Cape Town, Cape Town actually looks the best. Uh, it's a rate increase of 4%. Electricity increase of 4.8%. A water increase of 4.5%. And a refuse increase of 3.5%. So that looks a lot better than, than Ekuruleni. If we go to COJ, City of Joburg, these are the increases. Rate, 4.9%. Electricity, 8.1%. Refuse 5.2% and sewer 8.6%. So, a little bit better than Ekuruleni, but worse than Cape Town. Durban. 
Durban is electricity will increase by 6.2%, water will increase by 9.5%, and refuse by 6.4%. So I didn't get the sewer for Durban. I was looking for it, but I couldn't get that charge. So let me know. Daniel, guys, what do you think about that, eh? That's a huge increase. Now, the challenge that we have here is that all these municipal tariffs are increasing. Angelique, Mayambosa, how are you, Daniel? So all these, these municipal tariffs are increasing, okay? But do you think that you could increase the tenants' rental right now? Let me know in the comment section. Do you think you can increase rentals right now? End of the year. Anyone? So I think before, so, so, so you guys have got what the increases are. Now what I want us to do is who pays for these tariffs? So obviously, if you have an investment property and the rent comes in, right? So the tenant pays the rent. The tenant will pay for the water. The tenant will pay for the electricity. The tenant will pay for the refuse and the sewer. Did I cover everything in there? Water, yeah, so the tenant pays your rent, pays your water, your electricity, your refuge, your sewer. So that's what the... Angelique, how are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us, eh? Um, so, so that's what the tenant pays. So over and above the rental, the tenant will pay for the water, pay for electricity, refuge, and sewer. You guys with me? And then the owner, the landlord, pays the rates... Um, the levies, if you're in a sectional title, will pay for the maintenance of the property and will pay for the management of the property, if they have a management company. Okay? So, 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 so let, me, let me repeat that. So your tenant, who's responsible for these charges? Your tenant will pay rent to you. They'll pay electricity, water, refuge, um, sewage. Okay? And the owner will pay the rates, the landlord, the rates, levies, if it's a sectional title, maintenance and management of the property. So we see that with all these increases going up, it's going to put a lot of strain on the tenants. Daryl, how are you? Good, good, good. So for those of you that are only jumping on now, we're talking about municipal charges. So let me know what your thoughts are. Right? In the beginning, I already read all the different um, tariff increases for Gurulani, Cape Town, City of Joburg, Durban, and they're quite um, substantial. So my question to you guys is, are these increases sustainable or not? Because what happens is, as a landlord, you get the rent in, but you push all the expenses onto the tenant. Is it sustainable for the tenants, especially in this economic climate that we're in? Daryl, Angelique, Daniel, um, Mania Borso, what do you guys think? Let me know. Okay. And the challenges are that tenants might not be able to keep up with these increases because what will happen is that salaries are not increasing. You guys with me? We actually in an environment where more people are getting retrenched and people are, are losing their jobs. Kimberly is worse, Daryl says. Do you know what the increase, what the, the tariff increases are in Kimberley? Daryl, I just checked the Kubulene, Cape Town, Joburg and Cape Town. Guys, if you're in Bloemfontein, or you're in Kimberley, or if you're in Uppington, or PE, wherever I are in the country, go and go see what the increases are. So, tenants, tenants can't keep up with the increases, right? The landlords and owners can't raise the rent. So, it's basically a lose-lose situation that we have here. Right? So, that that is the predicament and the challenge we find ourselves in. And, and I know a lot of a lot of um, these big, the big developers and the big landlords in Joburg, I was in a tough, with big guys, they own about 2,000, 3,000 units in the city of Joburg. And they say this is their main problem, is the municipal tariffs going up at a ridiculous high rate, way above inflation, which the tenants can't keep up with. The owners can't raise their rents because the tenants are on too much pressure. So, so, so no one is winning here, okay? You're still liable for these expenses. That's why it's critical to have a reserve when you start investing. Yeah, true. Um, 
True there. Thank you, Devil. So Devil says you are still liable for these expenses. That's why it's critical to have a reserve when you start investing. Okay. And I think that's why it's important to, 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 to buy the right property and to make sure that your positive cash flow, where your, your rent comes in and it covers all your expenses and that you still have a buffer cash flow profit at the end of that. Okay. Make sense? And we're talking about investors, but I think, I think even for, for, for normal homeowners, Daryl, Angelique, normal homeowners, if you buy a house, you think that you're only going to have to pay the bond. And you say, okay, I can afford this bond, right? Um, can afford the bond, but now you're going to have to take into consideration electricity, water, refuge, sewer charges, right? Maintenance of the property. Now that shoots it up. Now, suddenly a lot of people that could afford it can't afford it because of all these increases. And I think in, as an investor, it's critical that we know what these are, we know what the challenges are, and we try to come up with solutions to help us as investors and also to help the tenants. Okay? Now, And the problem is, tenants complain about these things. So now when, when, when Ekuruleni, I mean, I mean Ekuruleni, Ekuruleni pushes up the tariffs and I push up the tenants' tariffs, there's a huge fight, right? Obviously not with me, with the managing agent and them. But, but it's a huge fight because they also can't afford it. Right? So now we have to keep our rentals more or less the same. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's not a win-win situation. Let's see what Angelique says. Angelique says, I think it's more feasible to request the additional cost from the tenants. However, if you have a deposit in advance, you could tap into, if you run short of cash flow, you could be covered. Okay. Um, yeah, if you, let me just read that. I think it's not, it's not feasible to request the additional cost from the tenants. Yeah, okay, so you so, so Angelique, if I get you right, are you saying that the landlord should pay the increases and the additional costs? Is that is that what you're saying? However, if you have a deposit in advance, you could tap into if you run short of cash flow. But then if the tenant moves out and he wants his deposit back, then you still need to come up with that, Angelique. But thank you for the comment there. So, so those are some of the chat now. So, an increases. We've looked at who pays for it, the tenant pays, he pays the landlord the rent, he pays the water, he pays the electricity, the refuse, the sewer. The owner pays the rates, the levies if it's a sectional title, maintenance of the property, and obviously management if, if there's a management agent. Now, now why, let me know, why do you guys think, give me a few, um, why do you think that the municipalities are increasing their, their, their tariffs, um, with so much. Let me know. Angelique, Daryl. Let me know why you think that they're increasing it. What do you think the problems are? I'm actually quite curious to find out what you guys think the, the problems are at the municipalities. Come, give me one Angelique. Give me one Daryl. Why do you think there's such a huge increase in, 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 in these tariffs? Okay, you guys got wait quiet on me, but that's, that's fine. So firstly, they're overstaffed. Municipalities, government is overstaffed, so they need to increase that to keep up with salaries. Right now, you know that's, a, that's another issue which is difficult to, to sort out in South Africa. So they overstocked. They, I, I actually saw, I saw that, um, where was this? In Johannesburg, I think it was that the municipal staff are getting an increase of, I think between six and 7%, okay? So they overstaffed. Mismanagement, waste of resources. Thank you, Daryl. Overstaffed, mismanagement, waste of resources, um, corruption, the inefficiencies, Mismanagement, there we go. Um, lack of payments, people are not paying. 
right? Because a lot of people are finding are falling on tough times and they're not paying the municipalities as they should. And especially because it's going up at such a rapid rate, people are saying, no, man. Um, and I think another thing that's also frustrating is that certain, certain areas pay for them, for refuse, for, for electricity and water, and other areas don't pay. I think that's some of the challenges as well. Angelique says maybe because the interest rates has dropped and also maybe because they in so much of debt. Yes. I think the interest rate drop has really helped landlords over this time. Um, actually, I hope it could drop some more. So, 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 so those are some of the things. So it's overstaffed. Municipalities are overstaffed. So they need to increase to keep up with, with that. Inefficiencies, corruption, um, mismanagement, lack of payments coming in. And the challenge because there's, there's, there's a lot of areas that do not pay for water, for electricity, right? And then you find other areas do pay. So then some people say in the payment areas and they say that, listen, um, we're also not going to pay. If they don't pay, I'm not going to pay. Yeah, so, 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 Daryl, so those are some of the challenges, eh? So now you find people that could pay. Some of them are saying, I'm not going to pay if, if they don't pay. Why should they get it free and we have to pay for it? Which is another, which is another issue um, that needs to be addressed. And, and the challenge is that in the non-paying areas, they do not put off the lights or they do not put off the water. But in the, in the paying areas, you get notices and they, and, they, and they start putting it off. So those are some of the challenges there we have. Um, I actually got you. I said that. So this was last year. So with TPN and with some of the guys, they said that. And this was last year, 2020. What, what are we in now? In 2020. This was 2019. I was at a conference, I think somewhere mid-2019 to the end, and they said the average rental increase is between 4 and 5%. So that's way below inflation. That, that's, that's what the average landlord can expect to increase his rental. But this was last year. I think this year we can't even increase it by anything. We just need to keep it the same. What are your thoughts? Do you guys think we can increase rentals during this time? Anyone has a view on that? But anyway, we'll see. We're hoping things get better. So those are some of the guys. So I told you what the what the increases are in in Nikuleni, Cape Town, City of Joburg, Durban. Who pays for it? Um, what the challenges are? And now let's let's look at a, let's 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 brainstorm a few solutions on here. So what are the solutions for electricity? Obviously, you have prepaid meters, right? So, so, so that is on the tenant. Um, prepaid meters, they can manage the electricity. They can manage the, the lights in the stoves and whatever it is. And they can manage. So you want prepaid, electric, prepaid meters in all your properties. Another thing which is becoming crucial now, I think, that is a must-have is water meters. Prepaid water meters. I don't know, how do you guys feel about prepaid water meters? I think that's, I think that's where we're going, going forward with all these charges that now with, with, with prepaid water meters, the tenants can start managing their own water. And they can say, okay, listen, I'm not going to shower that long. Um, um, whatever, I'm going to use, which one uses more, shower or bath? I think a bath uses more water than a shower, depending on how long you're in. Probably depend on people that are in from you and their financial situation. Hmm? Yeah, that's what the, with the rental increases, so, so it'll depend on that. So water meters, guys. Electricity meters, get them in your property. Anthony, how are you? I tried phoning your phone was off. I think it was, when was it? Beginning of this week or end of last week. But anyway, we'll try again. Prepaid meters, electricity, and prepaid water meters. I think that's a necessity now in our properties. Okay? Because now the tenants can manage the electricity, they can manage the water. Because if you, if you don't have it and you come with a bill of this much, tenants are going to say, no, no, I never use that much water. You guys with me? So water meters, currently they're a bit, they're a bit expensive. I doubt that, especially if someone's already occupying the space. One can do it though, if a new tenant moves in. I think so, Angelique. I think it's going to be difficult with existing tenants. But I think if you, if you explain it to them, if you bring it in, 
and and you explain why you're doing it and that it could help them then then i think that'll be better for them but but my personal opinion now is water meters and with the water meters you can also say you can also say to them listen we're going to put water meters but we are going to do is we put low flow taps as well so that's that's going to that's going to help you with your consumption all right low flow taps low flow showers to make sure that you use less water that'll keep your cost down yes true Daryl. so now the vetting of of tenants are going to be crucial and make sure that your tenants will be able to afford all these extra costs and not just be able to afford the rent because they might be able to afford the rent but can they afford electricity the water the refuse and all these other charges and sewer charges which is a slip they will say uh, okay they are same thing so those are the thing electrical me electricity meters which most people have in right most people are used to this now they've got prepaid meters um, prepaid water meters is slightly new but i think as landlords this is where we go so when you get it when you get a new property you're refurbishing it or building even before there's tenants in put in the the the, the prepaid water they're quite expensive right eh? i think the chart the, the cost i got on them was they were about between two and three thousand two thousand five hundred two 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 five that was the, the last um for a water meter but and then it's quite expensive for that one building the, the quote with installation was probably up to about ninety thousand for water meters and for insulation so so there's quite a cost involved in it then solar pumps right for the geezers also a bit expensive but i think in the long run it's going to help you solar pumps for the geezers so write this down guys electrical meters water meters um, low flow tap showers important um, solar pumps LED lighting in the communal areas maybe put I've I had LED lighting but yesterday I was with um, TJ from M5 property addicts so we were going through a property together and and he said listen man you should put solar here in these communal areas because then the communal areas on solar, so currently they got LED lights, but the communal areas on solar, right? So the communal areas are on the landlord's expense. So for the landlord, that can, can help you in the communal, but even LED lighting in the, in, the, in the units for the tenants. LED lights, you guys with me? So that can help them as well. So these are some, some, uh, some ideas that we can use to cut costs. What else can we put in? Guys, is there anything I didn't think of? You're going green, yeah, that's the thing. And I think going green is... A, is expensive but i think it's getting more cheaper now as more people are coming in and, and, and realizing that they need to go green it was usually expensive but i think as more people come in and more people want it, i think costs are going to come down and obviously as technology improves as well so those are some of the things that we looked at um what else is there daryl anthony angelique anything in there that i missed electrical meters water meters solar pumps led lighting so solar lights um, low flow tap showers in there and I think that's it going green right so guys so these are some of the things here which which these are things we have to deal with you guys with me these are the things that we have to deal with because these costs are, are going up way too high it's not sustainable um, it's going to put pressure on the tenants and when it puts pressure on the tenants, they move out. And when they move out, you have vacancies, which, which obviously isn't what, what no landlord wants. And there was even a, there was a, 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 something that said last year, that said because of these high municipal costs, now you find your average um, tenant paying all these high municipal costs, maybe in a one bed, one bath, bedroom, or in a bachelor. So what they do is, now a few people are starting to move out of good quality accommodation, affordable accommodation, back into squatter camps. If you guys, now I, I don't have a stat on that. It was just a presentation by, 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 by big landlords in Joburg, um, is it Jay Palmer, which they manage about over I don't know, 50,000 units. That's so, 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 so they're saying because of these high costs, 
tenants can't afford it. Now, what they're doing, they're moving out of quality one bed bachelor accommodation back into squatter camps where they don't have those costs because some of them can't afford it, right? So they'll rather go and live in a squatter camp where they don't have to pay these, which is which is scary. Hey, that someone will move out of a good quality flat townhouse, whatever it is, into a squatter camp because of these high costs. So, 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 guys. So, what we wanted to cover is just some something for you to think about, something for you to know that you should start managing these costs, right? Managing them, helping your tenants, and see how you can help yourself to manage these because the way it's going, it doesn't seem like it's going to come down anytime soon with Escom. With 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 in the state the water is, um, yeah, bit of a tricky one, bit of a tricky one, and guys make sure in your statements because I had a a property where they charged me about ten thousand rand on a, on business tariffs for ref, refuse, right, and it was on a residential, so they charged me ten thousand rand a month for I think what are we in now? Till May, so it was about for seven, eight months. They were charging it. They've they eventually corrected it. So make sure that you look at these every month to see if they're charging you the correct amount. Make sure you see that 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 the, the, that that what you're getting in as well, your recoveries on your electricity and on your water um, balances out, right? Because obviously, as a landlord, you want to recover as much as these exp of these expenses as well. Okay, so guys, I hope that helped you. Um, yeah, that went quick. Half an hour went quick. Daryl says, let's see. Any questions, any comments before we close it off? Daryl says, if we look at the numbers, where 3,000 to 7,000 per is where the market TPN is, that can be true that people move out. Sad, eh? Yes, that's sad. So you find someone who can afford a three to 7,000 rental would rather move to a squatter camp because they cannot afford the rent and the charges and still live and eat and and, and 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 whatever send their children to school or whatever it is so so i uh, now ryan how's it now these are some of the things that the solutions electric meters water meters solar pumps led lighting solar lights low flow tap showers these are some of the things that, that that we need to look at but i think there's also these these big like jay palmer and all these big landlords in south africa at least they fighting and they going to the municipalities and trying to sort it out. Not easy. They, they're not getting a lot of joy. But at least we know there are people trying to push back against, against the municipalities. So, so, so awesome, guys. So God bless you. Felicia. Um, yeah, Ryan, you're on a bit late. Listen to the video. Now, as I said, comment, like, share. So this is an interesting topic. I would actually like to get... Which is difficult because we were we were at a we were at a, we were at a tough. Now they 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 finance a lot of these inner city buildings, and they could not get a municipal officer out to talk at their um, conference about these costs. I'm not sure, we'll I'm not sure if we can get someone. Maybe we'll see. We can get someone to explain us more. Maybe go into detail. We'll try and, and, and look for someone. But God bless you. Thank you guys. Get probably guys wise every Wednesday, one p.m. And 1 p.m. Right, guys, go to the website. We've got a free listing. If you want to list your investment opportunity on there on the platform, it's free. Mahala for nit. What's the other word? Oh, that's three languages. I don't know all 11, but anyway, go to the website, list your property for free to our investors. If you're an investor, subscribe. We've got, we've got three different options, right? Um, that offers different things on there. So Check out the website, subscribe. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, send us an email. Our email is on the website, right? So all the best. Thank you guys for logging in. Um, cheers. God bless.